Hi, and welcome to a liturgy on this, the seventh Sunday of Easter. On behalf of myself, Father Alec, and indeed all those responsible for putting together our liturgy, can I just wish you a very peaceful and restful weekend. Today, the liturgy reflects upon the antagonism that people of faith may face in this world, but more especially on love, which is more powerful than hatred because it comes to us from God. Jesus reveals God's love for us by creating the church, a community of people called and given grace to love God and one another. May you remove all hearts of stone and give us hearts of flesh, O Lord, instead, this day and always. Hello, my name is Morag and I'm from St Gregory's Parish. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. One day, Peter stood up to speak to the brothers. There were about 120 persons in the congregation. Brothers, the passage of scripture had to be fulfilled in which the Holy Spirit, speaking through David, foretells the fate of Judas, who offered himself as a guide to the men who arrested Jesus after having been one of our number and actually sharing this ministry of ours. Now in the book of Psalms it says, Let someone else take his office. We must therefore choose someone who has been with us the whole time that the Lord Jesus was travelling round with us, someone who was with us right from the time when John was baptising until the day when he was taken up from us, and he can act with us as a witness to his resurrection. Having nominated two candidates, Joseph, known as Barsabbas, whose surname was Justice, and Matthias, they prayed, Lord, you can read everyone's heart. Show us, therefore, which of these two you have chosen to take over this ministry and apostolate, which Judas abandoned to go to his proper place. They then drew lots for them, and as the lot fell to Matthias, he was listed as one of the twelve apostles. This is the word of the Lord. The Lord has set his way in heaven. My soul give thanks to the Lord. All my being bless his holy name. My soul give thanks to the Lord and never forget all his blessings. The Lord has set his way in heaven. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so strong is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our sins. The Lord has set his way in heaven. The Lord has set his way in heaven, and his kingdom is ruling over all. Give thanks to the Lord, all his angels, mighty in power, fulfilling his word. The Lord has set his way in heaven. And I'm from St. Catherine's. A reading from letter of John. My dear people, since God has loved us so much, we too should love one another. No one has ever seen God, but as long as we love one another, God will live in us and his love will be complete in us. We can know that we are living in him and he is living in us because he lets us share his spirit 
we ourselves saw and we testify that the Father sent his Son as Savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in him and he in God. We ourselves have known and put our faith in God's love towards ourselves. God is love and anyone who lives in love lives in God and God lives in him. This is the word of the Lord. Gospel acclamation. Alleluia, alleluia. I will not leave you orphans, says the Lord. I will come back to you and your hearts will be full of joy. Alleluia. and I am from St. John Vianney's Parish. A reading from the Gospel according to John. Jesus raised his eyes to heaven and said, Holy Father, keep those you have given me true to your name, so that they may be one like us. While I was with them, I kept those you had given me true to your name. I have watched over them, and not one is lost, except the one who chose to be lost, and this was to fulfill the scriptures. But now I am coming to you, and while still in the world, I say these things, to share my joy with them to the full. I pass your word on to them, and the world hated them because they belong to the world, no more than I belong to the world. I am not asking you to remove them from the world, but to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world and any more than I belong to the world. Consecrate them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. And for their sake, I consecrate myself, so that they too may be consecrated in truth. The Gospel of the Lord. The Gospel takes us back to Holy Thursday evening, when Jesus, realizing that his life is almost over, celebrates his farewell meal, the Last Supper, with his disciples. The following day, Good Friday, would see him suffering a most terrible death on the cross. As we listen to his prayer on the night before he died, we see that his thoughts were on how helpless his friends would be without him. He voices his concerns for their welfare, knowing that because of their mission, they will encounter opposition and hatred in the world. He gives them assurances and prepares them to cope with life after he's gone to the Father. Jesus did not pray that they would be spared from these trials and sufferings, but that they would remain faithful in spite of opposition. Those parting words of Christ are meant for us just as much as they were meant for the apostles. We have been taken into this prayer of Jesus as he has chosen us to share in his work and make even the smallest of our acts of compassion important. Our calling is to be missionaries, missionary disciples, dedicated to the truth of God's word by the way that we live and by our behaviour. It's not an easy pathway to travel, but God has not left us to carry out this great endeavour with our own strengths. If we place our lives in his hands, he will equip us with the qualities of mind, heart and character which are successful or necessary for the task. Often on occasions when we run into difficulties in life, we think God has abandoned us. It would be helpful at times of trouble 
if we could remember that God did not offer a release from problems, but the ability to cope with them, provided we turn to him for comfort and for help. What we have to do is to humbly admit to him that we cannot manage on our own. Only by turning to the wounded Jesus on the cross can we properly face our problems. With his powers, we can turn despair into hope, sorrow into joy, and hatred into love. All that matters is to be one with the living God, feeling his presence like a great reassurance and a deep calm in our hearts. The gospel ends with a prayerful appeal to remain true to our Christian roots, to be consecrated to the truth. This means that we are to have a value system, not dictated by the prevailing spirit of the age or the trends of society, but based on the gospel message. In this way, we will know what's important and when the suffering, struggles and tragedies of life occur, as they inevitably do, we will remain on course, able to work through the situation by clinging closely to our belief. The fruit of faithfulness is a unity and a freedom that the world cannot give. We would be selling ourselves short if we were even prepared to ignore this call to believe more firmly and take our mission seriously. Prayers of Intercession, 7th Sunday of Easter. Today marks the beginning of Laudato Si Week, where people of conscience unite to celebrate the end of the Vatican's Laudato Si special anniversary year. Pope Francis urges us to undergo a personal and community ecological conversion. Let us pray for the Holy Spirit to guide us to bring Laudato Si to life and prepare for the future with hope as the church raises its prophetic voice and stresses the urgency of climate change. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all world leaders leading up to COP26, to unite in the quest to seek a sustainable future and work together to show creative solidarity in addressing the consequences of the pandemic and the courage to embrace the changes that will come in the search to ensure our common home is preserved for future generations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our newly elected government to protect those who carry the heavy burden of unjust economic policies, may they respect the fundamental rights of every person and every creature on God's earth to live in a world of love, justice and peace, where all resources are shared equally. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all in Israel and all in the Palestinian territories, for those who consider violence the only way forward, that through God's grace their hearts will be softened and they may realise that all humanity is connected and no one is really free until all are free. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. For ourselves, as we look at our, our life choices impact, both on creation and those in greatest need, may the Holy Spirit grant us the grace to accept the challenges that lie ahead of us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those in need during these trying times, especially those whose mental or physical health is suffering, we remember May they be held in the love of the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who have died and those who are grieving a loss, and in particular, 
may they rest in the peace of the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May the Lord, who makes his ways known to us through his light and wisdom, instruct you through his word. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I knew.